once, before the war. Alas, I dare not say how many times the mood has come. I, too, was filled with doubt and gloom. A foreigner, an acute and good man, had impressively said to me that day, putting in form, indeed, my own observations. I have traveled much in the United States and watched their politicians and listened to the speeches of the candidates and read the journals and gone into the public houses and heard the unguarded men. And I have found your vaunted America honeycombed from top to toe with infidelism, even to itself and its own program. I have marked the brazen hell faces of secession and slavery glazing defiantly from all the windows and doorways. I have everywhere found, primarily, thieves and scallywags arranging the nominations to offices and sometimes filling the offices themselves. I have found the North just as full of bad stuff as the South. Of the holders of public office in the nation or the states or their municipalities, I have found that not one in a hundred has been chosen by any spontaneous selection of the outsiders, the people. But all have been nominated and put through by little or large caucuses of politicians and have got in by corrupt rings and electioneering, not capacity or desert. I have noticed how millions of sturdy farmers and mechanics are thus the helpless supplejacks of comparatively few politicians. And I have noticed more and more the alarming spectacle of parties usurping the government and openly and shamelessly wielding it for party purposes. Sad, serious, deep truths. Over those politicians and great and little rings and over all their insolence and wiles and over the powerfullest parties, looms of power, too sluggish maybe, but ever holding decisions and decrees in hand. Ready, with stern process, to execute them as soon as plainly needed, and at times, indeed, summarily crushing to atoms the mightiest parties, even in the hour of their pride. In saner hours, far different are the amounts of these things from what, at first sight, they appear. Though it is no doubt important who is elected governor, mayor, or legislator, and full of dismay when incompetent or vile ones get elected, as they sometimes do, there are other, quieter contingencies, infinitely more important. Shams will always be the show, like ocean scum. Enough, if water deep and clear make up the rest. Enough that while the piled embroidered shoddy god and fraud spreads to the superficial eye, the hidden warp and weft are genuine and will wear forever. Enough, in short, that the race, the land which could raise such a late rebellion, could also be put down. The average man of a land at last is only important. He, in these states, remains immortal owner and boss, deriving good uses somehow out of any sort of servant in office, even the basest. Certain universal requisites and their settled regularity and protection being first secured, a nation like ours in a sort of geological formation state, trying continually new experiments, choosing new delegations, is not served by the best men only, but sometimes more by those that provoke it. By the combats they arouse. Thus, national rage, fury, discussion, better than content. Thus, also, the warning signals, invaluable for aftertimes. What is more dramatic than the spectacle we have seen repeated, and doubtless long shall see, the popular judgment taking the successful candidates on trial in the offices. Standing off, as it were, and observing them and their doings for a while, and always giving finally the fit, exactly due reward. I think, after all, the sublimest part of political history and its culmination is currently issuing from the American people. I know nothing grander, better exercise, better digestion, more positive proof of the past, the triumphant result of faith in humankind than a well-contested, 
American national election. From the one he calls the foreigner, Whitman recognizes the truth of how outsiders perceive America so negatively. He, too, condemns political theatrics and worries that too many Americans follow the hype without considering the candidate's ideas or tying those ideals to the pre-established American principles. Whitman's essay so far encourages us to shift our gaze. The power, if we let it and if we remember it first and foremost, is in the common American through our genuineness, work ethic, character, and the vote. Thanks for watching. Move along to part two.